Hello everyone and welcome back to another car review. Now last time if you watched our Cobalt video that was the final car in our Grundelin fleet. We had finally done a video of all of our cars. Well right after that video <laughs> we went and bought another one and it's only a Corvette Stingray. It's you All right, so this is our 2015 Chevy Corvette Stingray. And just take a look at this car. This, I mean, the styling on this thing is fantastic. So 2015, it's the second year of the C7 generation, right? So you had the C6 before that, and then the C7. Now you have the C8. So this is the previous generation Corvette. But I mean, <laughs> just look at it. So this color, this is actually a very rare color to see on these. It's Daytona Sunrise Orange Metallic, and it just looks fantastic. It's different from the Sebring orange that you may see on later Corvettes. When the ZR1 was released, that was that debuted that new orange, but this is the one that came out with the Corvette originally, and you could only get it for the first two years, so 2015 was the last year you could get it. Again, it's a rare color. You don't see a lot of Corvettes in this. You know, you see the red, the blue, the white, the black, but this orange just really stands out. And not only is it in this fantastic color, but every other option on here is just fantastic, right? So some of the options we have are the black mirrors. You got the black roof on here, which is actually transparent, and we'll look at that later. The black wheels, along with the black badges, the Stingray badges on the sides are black, all of the vents are black, and the spoiler is black. I mean, and it just looks so good. You know, you think normally the C7 Stingray, you might think, oh, it's just the base model. But this one, with all of the black added on top of it and in this color, just looks fantastic. And the styling alone, I mean, this might be the best looking Corvette. I, I just love it. Now the C8, I'm partial to because I love mid-engine cars, but just the proportions on this thing, it's so much crisper than the C6 that, you know, it, it came after just with the sharp lines and the way it harkens back as well to the C2 Corvette, you know, the original Stingray, because this brought back the Stingray name. You've got just these lines over the haunches, the fast back, and again, just the, the proportions of it are outstanding. Along the side of the car, you can see again, just the, the lines on this looking so cool. One of the things you get with the Z51 for this year is staggered wheels. So it's 19 inch wheels on the front, 20 inch wheels on the back. And these five spoke wheels, just, I love how they look. Some of the really cool things on here, this has the gas fill up on the driver's side. I don't know why all cars don't have that. It kind of bothers me. But another cool thing here is these vents in the back, you know? You may have seen these, you don't know what they do. Some people think they cool the brakes, but they actually cool the transaxle. This has a transaxle, even though it's a front engine car. So the V8's up front, it goes, powers a drivetrain back here, and then you have the transmission in the back as opposed to being up front or in the middle. The reason I do that is for weight distribution. You have the engine up front, the transmission in the back, it actually has 50-50 weight distribution, which is pretty cool. And this is how it cools that transaxle, taking air in there. Another touch I absolutely love on this car are the door handles. Now, Ferrari for a long time had the worst door handles ever where they're just these little cones that pop open. Other people have, you know, like the door handles that pop open and you, those always break. But this has it where it's aerodynamic, it's clean, the whole door has nothing on it. You just stick your hand in here and it's an electronic release. It opens it right up. Super cool. I love how that looks. And it works really great too. Another one of the things you get with the Z51 is the full length spoiler back here. So some Stingrays you may see just have the little thing on here and it looks kind of cheesy. This has the full width spoiler and it's also again in black which is so cool as opposed to the body color because this is your third brake light here that's built into it but you just get the full width which makes it look cool. And again the tail lights look awesome. Now I know it's the end of the world it doesn't have circular tail lights. <laughs> this is the first Corvette not to have circular tail lights, though I'd argue the C4 are pretty much squares. But regardless, I mean, honestly, it still has the 4, which harks back to the Corvette, and they look so cool that I don't even care that they're not circular. So they're actually 3D. You can stick your hand in there a little bit. Gives them just this really cool element, along with the functional vents here, which is awesome. And then you have the blacked out diffuser with some more vents. And 
the center exhaust. I mean, one of the biggest things people complained about with the C8 is you lost the center quad exhaust. They went to quad exhaust on the outsides, but this is it's so cool. Look at the size of these exhaust pipes. It's huge, and you'll hear later, they sound incredible with this engine. Another really cool thing about these C7s as opposed to C8 is all the trunk space you get. Now, I know that you have, you know, the back trunk and the front with the C8, but this way, with the front engine, if I just pop it open here, there's a secret button, you can see the massive amount of storage space you get here. I mean, even with the transaxle in the back, there is massive amounts of room. You could actually put stuff in here in your 460 horsepower supercar. <laughs> it is seriously cool. You even have a little net here you can put stuff. You got your subwoofer back here. Really incredible how convenient these cars are. Then coming around to the engine of this car, of course, now another great thing is it has the backwards facing hood as all Corvettes should. This is actually the last one to have that since again, the C8 is mid-engine. This really is a last of many things with the Corvette. But I mean, look, at this engine bay. It is so cool. Now, one of the crazy things Corvette has to do is keep the uh, hood line low, right? The whole thing is the, not with like a Challenger or a Mustang. We have this huge hood and these hood scoops and everything. The Corvette is such a low, it really is like a supercar design. The uh, hood line has to be kept also really low. So even though you have this massive 6.2 liter pushrod V8, they managed to keep it really low and compact in here, which is neat. Now, you see our engine cover here does say Corvette, though it is a little faded on that side. One really cool aftermarket thing you can get is replace these, but you can get them in different colors. So you can actually get the uh, orange metallic color on the engine cover, and we're thinking about getting that. That would be a really cool touch. But again, it's such a neat engine, and you can really see a lot of it for being a modern car, and just the size of this engine is pretty crazy. 6.2 liters is no joke. With the Stingray, you get 455 horsepower and about 460 foot-pounds of torque, but with the Z51 package, you actually get a performance exhaust, and when that's active, that bumps it up another five horsepower, so you get 460 horsepower in here. Now, a lot of you supercar people, and myself included before I drove this, are probably like, oh, 450 horsepower, that's not really that much. Get the Z06, 650 horsepower. 450 horsepower is a lot of horsepower, especially in a car like this. This is not super heavy. 450 horsepower and especially 460 foot pounds of torque. You feel it when you're driving this car. So another cool feature here is you can see on the hood, there's actually imprinted the Corvette flags. A lot of people get those like colored in. You can get a different engine cover for there, which would look really cool. But just the fact they put that on there is really neat. And also the weight of this hood, it's hydraulic, but also just the hood itself, very light. Now, another cool touch up here is the hood vent. This is functional, of course, as is pretty much everything on here. Functional vent on there, which adds more air into the engine. Just so cool. All right, so moving to the interior of the Corvette. Now, one of the very first things you see as you step in are those awesome Corvette side sills, which looks so cool. Um, as well as when you get in, it says Corvette front and center as you get your, your you know gauge cluster here. Super cool. Now, moving in here. Now, a lot of people have complained about the quality of the C7 interior. I really don't understand that. Now, if I just we close up these doors here. Now, I'm saying this from a normal person's perspective. I am no high-end car reviewer, but I don't see what the problem is. And anyway, people who buy a Corvette, they don't buy it to have the nicest Bulgarian leather installed in their car. And, you know, I think that this interior is very good. Now, one of the things you notice while you're in here is our translucent roof. It looks black from the outside, but when you're inside, you can see everything and it's tinted really nice and dark. It's really cool and it helps open up everything because your view out the front is good, but you actually have a really low, like, I don't even know what to call this. This part here is really low and it kind of encroaches a little bit, but having this roof just opens it up so much. Another really cool thing with all C7 Corvettes, the roof comes off. So if you pull this switch here and pull some switches up here, you can take the roof right off and then you're pretty much in convertible and it fits right back in that trunk there. So <laughs> awesome feature. Um, if we just wake up the car a little bit here, notice the engine start stop button, which is square for some reason. <laughs> notice again, the Corvette flags showing up and you get your gauges here on this center screen. First off, it's a manual because of course it is if you know us it's a manual however this is a seven speed manual we have seven gears in this car um you're pretty crazy and I, it's the only 
manual transmission I know of that has more than six gears. Uh, pretty cool that Corvette put that much effort into making a new manual transmission for this car. And it is, of course, the last Corvette you can get a manual transmission with. C8 doesn't have that anymore. But overall, it's really cool in here. So you have your Corvette Stingray badge outlined there, really nice. Um, steering wheel's nice, it's leather wrapped, but a lot of really cool stuff. So you got your center console here, which opens sideways, interesting enough. There's not a huge amount of room in here, but there is USB ports and stuff. You can put your phone in there. This is your handbrake, an electronic handbrake, but you know, it works good. You have your hidden cup holders here, pretty cool. And this hidden um, cigarette lighter charge port thing. Pretty cool, you can plug stuff into that as well. And I just love that it folds away now. I also love this grab handle you have here for your passenger, and they will need it in this car. But um, really, really cool stuff. And behold, the buttons and knobs that this car uses. I love that. <laughs> if you know me and have watched any of my videos, the buttons are great. The climate control stuff, it's all buttons and knobs. I don't, I don't need anything else. None of that is in the screen, none of that nonsense, you know get that out of here but a cool touch is with this line that makes everything really driver focused you know it's all kind of covered towards the driver it's hard for the passenger to reach over this stuff so they actually have their own separate dial over there you can control your temperature you're heated and this has cooled seats which is that is a fantastic feature i love cooled seats they're great another kind of obscure thing you may not know about the c7 is you have a hidden storage pocket here if you hit the screen button the screen folds down and you have like a lot of space in here. There's even a port you can connect stuff into. I mean, I don't know who thought about that, but that's fantastic. And it goes right back up. So you have extra storage space there behind the screen. There's even more the, in the screen than there is in the center console. Pretty awesome. You have two memory seat functions here. So if you're the main driver of this car, you can set it to whatever your preferred settings are. Then when someone gets in there and they move the seat, which is always annoying, you can just hit your button and it'll take it right back to where it was. You don't have to adjust anything, which I think, again, a fantastic feature. So along your memory seats here, you have another really cool feature, which is the exit button. Now this car is really low and can be hard to get out of. So you can set this button to move the steering wheel back, move the seat back that gives you more room to get out of. Really cool. You have the Bose audio in here, also really cool, sounds great. But another weird thing on here is you have electronic um, buttons to get out of the door. You don't have a traditional door handle, so you just push the button and that opens it right up. Now, if the battery dies, you actually have a manual release here on the floor to open the door in case that's not working. Um, but, you know, that is really cool. You have the uh, heads-up display in this car as well, which displays a whole bunch of stuff, and we'll look at that later. And it's really nice, it's really handy to have. So now that we have the car on, we can look at some of the more features that this thing has in it. This car comes with a lot. So one of the really neat things that it may be included with the Z51 package is the PDR, which is your performance data recorder. Now what that does is use a few cameras around the car to actually record your driving and you can overlay your performance stuff with it. So say you're on a track, you want to record you going around a track, best lab, or just look at how you're doing, you can use the PDR and it'll record your driving and give you stuff like G-Force, RPM, uh, you know, miles per hour, and overlay that on top of the, the feed. So that's really cool that you have that. And you know, you have your basic stuff in here, you have your audio, your phone, your navigation, which is pretty cool. You select nav and something I love on here, your little car is actually a Corvette there, which is pretty awesome. You know, it works really well, but you can see here with these lit up, we have actually dual climate controls here. You have your fan knob, again, knobs, they just work so good. Your, your temperature here, the AC is amazing. Of course it is, you know, it's an American car. And again, cooled seats or heated seats. So cool. I love that this has cooled seats and they work really good too. Um, but anyway, focusing now on, you know, all of this center stuff. So the heads up display is a really neat function, you know, so you can, you can make it brighter. You can, you can move it around a little bit, but the really cool thing is when you hit the info button here, it actually sorts between different things you want to display. Really, really neat touch, and it works so well, you don't even need to look at the gauge cluster. And the fact that you can display G-forces 
on your heads up display is just awesome. But you do get a really cool screen. Now this isn't fully digital like it is in the C8, but this screen is pretty configurable. You can do quite a few things with it. Now, with the buttons on the steering wheel, you can see you can configure what you want to display. So right now it's on audio, it's showing you know the radio station. You can move to performance, and that gives you on the side some of your performance stuff, you know, your engine, uh, temperature, oil temperature, battery, tire pressure, stuff like that. You can do, you know, basic info that shows you some other things you can flip through. Um, but yeah, you can configure, you know, phone, you can actually have navigation and that shows up on the heads up display, shows you some navigation stuff. It, it is pretty cool. But one of my favorite features is when you use the knob in the middle to select your mode. Right now we're in touring. If you move it over into sport mode, it actually changes the gauge cluster to give you a cooler screen. And one of my favorites is actually in track mode, you get this screen, which is so cool looking. Look at that. So I, I love that it changes depending on what mode you're in. You also have um, eco mode, which enables you know cylinder deactivation, stuff like that. We've actually gotten some pretty good miles per gallon in this car, like over 20 on our drive. But normally we leave it in tour. When you're in sport mode, it actually gives you um, a better throttle response and when you have the performance exhaust in uh, auto mode it'll open up the exhaust uh, automatically when you put it in sport mode or it'll you know dull it down when you put it in track mode right now we have it on all the time because it sounds really cool um, but yeah another re real quick thing I do want to touch on is our speedometer now you may notice that <laughs> our speedometer goes up to 330 miles an hour. Um, now the reason for that is this car was originally uh, a Canadian car. You know, it was first built for someone in Canada before it was moved over to the US, which means that the speedometer was originally set in kilometers an hour, which is why it goes up to 330 kilometers an hour. But when you switch it to miles per hour, it doesn't switch the numbers, it just switches where the, uh, you know, the needle points. So now that we're in miles per hour, it points up to 330 miles an hour. Uh, pretty crazy. But anyway, with all of that stuff set, and I've even touched on a lot of it, you have so many features in this car. Let's do the real thing and take it for a drive. <laughs> Again, reverse all the way over and down. It's kind of like a five speed, but except it's a seven speed. We take off our electronic parking brake here, and there we go. All right, so let me just configure my heads up display to show my G-forces because that's really important, you know. Our nice backup camera here works pretty well. And here we go. Now with this manual transmission, <laughs> This is a, obviously, this is a hardcore, you know, sports car here. So the, sh the throws are short, like from third to fourth, there's not a lot of travel and it's really notchy. I mean, it's not like it's hard to get into gear, but it really like snicks in. It's a really, really nice transmission. The clutch is easy, you know, we're in tour mode. So the throttle isn't too snappy right now. The clutch is, it's, it's really good. And again, you can get in this car and you can drive it. I'm no, you know, performance experience car reviewer. I don't drive Lamborghinis and Ferraris all the time, but getting into this car, it's like you're driving a Chevy when you just get into it. Now, obviously, the, it's not your normal Chevy, but you can drive it like a normal car. And again, that, I mean, the engine note, it's so good. This is the LT1 engine and it's one of the best sounding engines. It, it really, it sounds so good. So I'm just gonna flip over our info to performance. But a really cool touch on here. Now, with the automatic, these would obviously be your paddle shifters. You have paddle shifters with that. But since it's the manual, you instead have rev matching, which is a really, really neat touch. So if I just turn that on, um, you know, the gear becomes yellow here. Another cool thing with this is it actually shows what gear you're in on the heads up display and in your gauge cluster, which is nice because you have seven of them. It can get a little confusing what gear you're in. But now that you're in rev matching mode, what that does is when you downshift, normally if you're a race car driver, you know, you would you would push in the gas to make it smoother. Um, but this does that for you. It automatically 
That wasn't me touching the gas at all. It automatically revs up the engine to the exact RPM of the gear you're going into, which means when you're downshifting, you don't get any jolts, which is really handy for normal driving and for track driving, which is really cool. And the visibility is great in this car. I said, you know, the, the level of the windshield is a little low, but your side and even your back visibility, it's low, but it's clear. There's nothing obstructing it. This car is so fast. I mean, this is the Stingray, the base version of the Corvette, but 450 horse, 460 horsepower because we have the exhaust open. I mean, it's, it's insane. That was 3000 RPM with maybe a quarter throttle and you're just like flying. This car is crazy. But speaking about the view, I really love the view out the front. It reminds me of our 66 Corvette, which if you haven't seen that video, you should go check it out. You see the haunches over the front wheels and it's such a cool view. But again, the low hood line, it doesn't obstruct you. You have good visibility through here. We're in tour mode. The ride is great. The ride is really nice in here and you have space. You're not crammed in. This is a car that you can drive. And a, f a cool story about this car, we bought it from Connecticut, so we drove four hours up to Connecticut to go pick this up because again we wanted this color I love this color it's one of the best and it's hard to find but we found this color with this spec you know the translucent roof all the blacked out parts on it and the Z51 package and uh, like that was the one this is the Corvette we need to get so we drove all the way to Connecticut and then we drove it all the way back now on the way back we got stuck in New York traffic so we were going through like central New York and it was horrible. These New York people were like on the butt of the car and we had just bought it. We're not that good at driving it yet. Oh, it was, it was so stressful, but the car was fine the whole way. And it's great to ride in, it's great to drive. And even for long distances, you put it in tour mode and, and you're set, you know? Again, didn't touch the throttle. I love the rev matching and, and the handling as well. Now, I'm no race car driver, but this car is insane. It's the Z51. But it's not a Grand Sport or a Z06, but still the handling. Now we can't go that fast because of course there's a Subaru crossover in front of us. But I mean, I mean, you can, you can just kind of throw it around the corner and it's like, oh, I could have gone like 50 miles an hour faster. It's so settled. And even when you get on the gas a little bit, this car it doesn't feel like, oh, I'm gonna crash, it's spinning out, there's so much power. <laughs> I love that. You never feel like it's just gonna lose control or spin out. It's, it's really planted and just settled on the ground. It's, it's really good. And just listen to that engine note. It's, woo, man. And it's great to have a manual car. I, I, one of my biggest disappointments with the C8 is you can no longer get a manual transmission. Having a manual with a car like this is so awesome. It makes you so much more connected to the car. And this is a fantastic manual. I really, really like this manual. The clutch is great. It's not like break your leg heavy, but it's got a good weight to it. And, and the shifter is just so, you know, with seven gears, you think you might get lost, but it's really easy to, to go on each gear, kind of guide you there. One of the interesting thing that this car does is, uh, I'm not sure quite what it's called, but when you're in certain modes and you have rev matching off, <laughs> it'll, it'll guide you to different gears. So say you're in first gear, and you rev it out pretty high in first gear, it'll direct you over to fourth gear. So you skip two and three, I guess for fuel economy reasons, which is, it's an odd thing to do. Um, and it's a little disconcerting sometimes because you're like, no, I want to go in second. And it's like, but you want to go in fourth. I'm like, no, I don't. So it's a little weird that it does that, but you put on the rev matching and it, it doesn't do that anymore. And it's only in some cases, it doesn't usually happen. It's a planted car, which I feel like some people don't talk about the Corvette. They're not, you know, they're always, oh, it's planted, it's a crazy car. But for me, again, a normal person driving this car, it feels planted, it feels set on the ground. I will never, never come close to the limits of this car's handling on the road. I'd have to go to a racetrack to do that. I really, I really believe that. Here we go, give her, give her some beans. Oh my gosh, it does not mess around. Like, 
driving this car as the Stingray, I can't imagine, I can't imagine the Z06, how ridiculous that car is, let alone the ZR1, 650 horsepower, 200 horsepower more than this. It's almost too much, like this 455 is perfect for street driving. And there is something special about owning the last manual Corvette. This is the last Corvette you could get as a manual. The C8's not a manual, and I really don't see them bringing them back, you know, bringing it back afterward, which is a shame. I really wish they had, they had developed a manual for the C8. Oh, I put, should have put it in sport mode. Wow! <laughs> it is truly something else how well this car handles. And then you can just... <laughs> wow! Man! I don't even have to say anything. I don't even have to say anything. This car is incredible. So that concludes our brand new Corvette, our other Corvette now. Uh, be sure to go check out the video on our 66, but I mean, this car is incredible. The styling you get, the performance you get, the fun you get from driving it, and the fact that this is a portion of the price of other cars that offer all of that, it's incredible. Corvettes are, are fantastic. So thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and uh, stay tuned for more Corvette and more car content. See you guys later. This is a Fiero chamois that I'm using. It's unacceptable. Oh no. There we go. All right, continue. If you watched our Cobalt video, we had said that we had finally covered all of the cars that we own and our Grundelin feet. Ah, Grundelin feet. All right, so this is our brand new, it's not brand new, you know. All right, so this is our 2015 Chevy Corvette Stingray Z... It's orange sun, Daytona sunrise. <laughs> you have it here um, and it is locking. You pop it open from the inside, right? It's not locking. You don't pop it open from the inside. <laughs> Blooper reel. So a NOS, a, a NOS. The thing is with this car, and notice the handle here, when you close it, the thing is with this car, notice the handle here, pretty cool. When you close it, what? When you close it, oh. in this car, you actually get a lot of really good features. Stupid bump. I caught it. Oh. <laughs> I love so disturbing you, stuff. You do. Love it. Yeah. Oh, she loves disturbing right. stuff.